Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about electroplating, uh, in this case especially uh, zinc plating. Um, it's actually a very satisfying and easy process. Uh, what you need is uh, your chemicals, which you can see here. Um, and I got mine from um, classicplating.co.uk, uh, not sponsored. Uh, but if you want to sponsor me, hit me up. <laughs> and um, I laid my uh, out in uh, several containers and uh, um, I uh, described what's in them uh, to not mix the chemicals by accident mm, because uh, I'm uh, uh, taking this stuff away when I'm working on uh, other things. So I put this in separate jugs so uh, to avoid mixing uh, chemicals and uh, exploding uh, myself um, I did it like this uh, this is not how you have to do it this is the way I choose uh, you can uh, have the uh, bucket for rinsing uh, as a one bucket but for me it's just uh, easier to dip one into it another uh, as, uh, as I go mm -hmm. so um, let me explain the process how to go from a part like this uh, which has uh, some internal rust and uh, some grime and uh, it was uh, plated before to something like this which is now cleaned and ready to be put back on the car so on this example uh, I'm uh, uh, plating uh, parts for a um, CIS uh, injection system for a Porsche and uh, let's start with uh, with a part that came directly off the engine. Uh, this is fuel fitting. Uh, after disassembling, so after taking the hose uh, off, uh, it goes into an um, acid bath to uh, remove the rust from all the crevices. This is how it came came out. Uh, this part obviously needs some more work, uh, like you can see here. Uh, but you can. Uh, put it in uh, to the acid for about an hour and then uh, rework it with the wire wheel and then put it back together. After that process, uh, after about two hours, uh, the part comes uh, out looking like this. It has most of the uh, previous uh, coating stripped, but you can see here there's still some left, which just shows you the durability of the zinc coating. Uh, it's always, uh, in my opinion, better to remove uh, the old contaminants using uh, acid because uh, it's just easier to get in all the small crevices and uh, areas that you cannot go into so good with the wire wheel. Um, after it comes out of the bath for the second time, I go uh, through the part mm, with uh, uh, some scotch bright or emery cloth or what you want to call it mm, and uh, um, my, uh, and a wire brush or a wire wheel this is actually uh, the part of uh, this fitting after that um, uh, it's done and there's no mechanical uh, contaminations on it no uh, um, rubber coatings or paint or things like that uh, I mm, put the piece on a hanger, like this. These are the hangers I uh, already uh, used. I use a copper wire which comes with the kit. It's very soft and you can use it multiple times. And as the first step, you put it into the degreaser. You don't have to put it uh, there for too long, especially uh, if you prepared your uh, parts very good. This is the parts I prepared early. early, early in forehand and um, I prepared those parts about two days ago and they are ready to go into the degreaser the uh, I put a lot of care into um, into preparing the parts, parts uh, very good before going into the chemicals so to keep my chemicals uh, as clean as possible and uh, to use them uh, for a longer period of time this set I've been already using for two days and as you can see um, there are no contaminants, uh, contaminants inside. Yeah, there's a fly in there. Uh, most of what you can see is uh, from from the containers rubbing on the ground. <clears throat> and uh, after the degreaser, 
uh, has, has done this job. It's a very good decreaser, by the way. Um, we rinse the part in uh, normal water. So not to transfer one chemical into the other. Then we put it in acid, which is called uh, pickle dip, um, or dry pickle dip. And as the guys from uh, Project Binky noticed, there's nothing uh, dry about this because, um, well, it's wet. Uh, as you can see, there's a reaction there, which shows you uh, there's actually contaminants on the surface. And as long as this reaction is going, you know uh, that the parts that the part is not ready to go in uh, to the uh, next path. Sometimes you can clearly see uh, where there's uh, rests of um, of old coatings and stuff. And um, this cleans uh, the part and etches it before it goes into the into the um, electrolysis, electrolysis uh, tank. After this step, I'm gonna leave this here because, I, like I said, I uh, it has to stop a bubbling. After this step, it goes to deionized water, deionized. I know this is uh, misspelled. Sorry, uh, to rinse it off, and then we go into the tank. So the tank is nothing specific, it's just a bucket that comes with the kit. These are the, the uh, plates, uh, electrodes, uh, which uh, are made of zinc. Uh, um, and there's also so other chemicals that uh, are involved, uh, which you uh, mix in, but it's all included in the, in the kit. Um, so the process electrolysis uh, uh, requires uh, current. And this is supplied by a bench supply that I built. It's quite an. Uh, it's actually a um, hyped up version of what what you come, become with the kit. Um, and there's also a resistor which um, allows you to control the amount of current which flows in the into the tank. Um, you can lower the voltage, which also lowers the amperage just because that's the way it, how the power supply is built but that's actually uh, not how it's supposed to be um, I'm basing my uh, readouts on uh, power so in constant in DC uh, power is just uh, voltage uh, multiplied by uh, amperage so in this case it's 12.1 watts that's going into the system uh, uh, some of the, it's uh, wasted here in, in form of heat and it goes like uh, the plus side goes to the resistor, then through the resistive wire, and with this uh, crocodile clip, it goes uh, to the electrodes. And the negative side uh, goes to this rail. I use this rail so I can easily put new things in and out, and it uh, works very well. I clean uh, the surface uh, every day with Scotch Brite. I clean the surface of the wires each, which each time. Uh, before I'm putting it here, uh, also with Scotch Brite to um, to ensure that I have a good electrical connections. Uh, these parts uh, were uh, are actually bake, uh, baking or, or electroplating for some quite some time, and there uh, also is a reaction that uh, frees some bubbles, as you can see on the surface here. At the begin, be, beginning, uh, there's more bubbles. Uh, after a while, they, the bubbles stop, uh, which tells you that the whole part is covered. But the longer you uh, let your uh, parts uh, stay in this uh, container, the better or the thicker um, the um, layer of zinc will, will get. So let's just uh, take one out and I'm going to show you the rest of the process. Uh, after taking it out from here, we're gonna rinse it deionized water and then we're gonna etch it with nitric acid for a few seconds we're gonna rinse it and then we're gonna choose one of two colors either uh, gold yellow or silver blue uh, after uh, having it in the passivate uh, solution which deactivates the uh, the surface uh, of the part uh, we're gonna rinse it and then we're gonna going to uh, hang it there uh, sorry for the mess uh, where it's going to dry 
and uh, on the in the end we have uh, parts that look like this. This uh, these two parts came from the same car. This is before, obviously, and this is after. Um, I've also made some uh, parts that are finished in uh, in gold or yellow. This is the first part I made. This uh, came out pretty good actually at the first uh, try and this is the last part I did yesterday. I've spent uh, about 10 hours so far um, on the on the parts that I'm that I have here and uh, some that are here, some that are here, some are, and there's others that are uh, ready to uh, to be dewired, so to say. Uh, so yeah, let's take this one because this was the longest. This had the longest time in here. It's hard to it's hard to show the camera, but uh, it looks to be perfect. So uh, after rinsing, we go into uh, it changes color color a bit of, uh, when rinsing, and it again changes color a bit when it goes into the acid. It's more silvery. You don't want to have it in the acid too long because uh, it actually dissolves the zinc. Then we're going to uh, rinse it, and then after rinsing, it goes into the passivate solution. We keep it in, uh, in the solution for about 10-20 seconds and you don't want to shake this uh, too violently because uh, you will shake the coating off. It's very hard to do while it's filming, sorry. And after that we are going to immerse it in just uh, another rinse which is normal water. And after that, this is how the part comes out.